Let's talk about the types and typecasting in PHP. PHP is dynamically typed or also known as weakly typed language where you're not required to define the type of your variable. And also the type of the variable can change after it has been defined. Dynamically typed language means that the type checking happens at runtime, while statically typed language means that type checking happens at compile time. For example, Java, C++, and C Sharp are the statically typed languages. Because PHP allows such type system, it is more flexible, but that flexibility comes at a price of performance and can sometimes result in unexpected bugs. However, PHP has improved its type system a lot in latest versions, and it even supports strict types. PHP supports 10 primitive types, which are grouped by 4 scalar types, 4 compound types, and 2 special types. And there are also 2 pseudotypes, which are mainly used for readability. These are mixed and void, but don't worry about these two for now. I will briefly talk about these types in this video, but I will also dedicate a video to each of the types separately. And the reason for that is because I want to go over each of these types in more detail, where I could discuss some very important points. And also putting all these in a single video would make the video too long. So let's review what these types are. The four scalar types are boolean, integer, float, and string. Boolean is just a simple representation of a truth value. It can either be true or false. Integers are the numeric values without the decimal points, also known as the whole numbers. So examples could be something like 1, 2, 3, 0, negative 5, and so on. Floats or floating point numbers, also known as doubles or decimals, are the numeric values with the decimal points. So examples of floats would be 1.5, 0 0.1, 0 0.005, negative 15.8, and so on. And we've already touched strings in the previous videos, and these are just a series of characters that are enclosed within either single or double quotes. So this could be geo, hello world, and so on. Let's define some of these types as variables and print them out on screen. So let's go ahead and define a variable called completed and set that to true. Let's define a variable called score and set that to 75. Let's define a variable called price and set that to 99 cents. And let's define a variable called greeting and say hello geo. So let's print each one of them out in a new line. I'm going to add the BR uh, HTML element here so that we can see everything on uh, separate lines. Let's refresh the page and we see 1, 75, 99 cents and hello geo. Now these three make sense. The first one doesn't really make sense because we assigned the value of true but it's printing as one. We'll talk about this more in a separate video dedicated to the boolean types but just keep in mind that when printing out true it will be printed as one and when printing out false it will be printed as blank. So false would be printed as nothing. Also this does not really indicate the type of a variable. Now there are a couple ways you could find out the type of a variable. There is something called getType function and you could pass it a variable and it will return the type of the variable. So for example we can do echo get type and do completed and that will return boolean. We can do score and they will return integer. We can do it for price and will return double which is the same as float we can do greeting and that will return string. Another way of finding out the type of the variable is by using something called var dump and then you provide the variable. So completed in this case. And var dump basically just prints everything it knows about the expression you give it to. So we gave the completed variable here and if we refresh the page it prints the value that the variable holds which is true in this case and it also prints the data type of that variable which is boolean in this case. If we var dump the score we see that the value is 75 and its data type is integer. Let's var dump price. The data type is float and value is 0.99. And let's var dump the grading and that's data type string with nine characters. And this is the value. So these are the basics of the four scalar types. As I mentioned before, I'm going to go into more details on each of the data types because there are some important information that you need to know how these values actually get casted into different types and how they're handled by PHP. Arrays are basically just a list of items, and these items can be of many different types. For example, you could have list of integers, you could have list of booleans, you could have list of mixed booleans and integers and floats and so on. We'll talk about the types of arrays and more details about arrays in separate dedicated video. So we can define a variable called companies and set that to square brackets, and this indicates that this is just an empty array. 
you could put values in here so we can put something like one two and three and then we can also put floating numbers 0 0.5 negative 9.2 we can also put strings in it and we can put booleans as well so as you can see the array is just list of items and how do you print arrays if you do echo companies it is just going to print the word array and you're going to get a notice that PHP is trying to convert an array into a string and it's kind of failing because it does not know how to convert an array into a string and it's just displaying the word array. Now on your computer this might be hidden depending on what the error reporting is set on your PHP configuration file. We're going to talk about the PHP configuration file in a separate video and how to set different error reporting levels and so on. So don't worry about that for now. Another way you could print arrays is by using a function called print underscore r and as you can see just print set array in more readable format. I'm not going to go into more detail about it in this video because I'm going to have a separate dedicated video to arrays and I'm going to discuss all the necessary details in there. And the last three compound types, objects, callables and iterables, are a bit advanced types so I don't want to overwhelm you with too much information in this video but I will definitely have dedicated videos on each of these types. Don't worry we'll get there and you will know what these types are and how to use them. And finally we have the two special types. One is resource and the other one is null. For the resource, same applies as to these three. I'm going to have a separate video about it, so don't worry about it now. And null, it just simply means no value or nothing. So now you know the basics of the data types in PHP. How does actually PHP know that this variable, for example, is an integer? We have not specifically stated that this variable is an integer. We just simply assigned the value 75 to the variable of score. And when we do var dump of the score, we get integer and this happens because php will automatically determine the data type during runtime and in this case php will basically figure it out that you're trying to define this variable as an integer because it has no quotes around it if we were to put quotes around it then php will figure this out that this is not an integer this is actually a string and if we do var dump as you can see it will print 75 with the data type of string there is also the concept of type hinting within your functions and class properties i will cover the functions and class properties in more detail within the separate videos just bear with me here i just want to show you an example of what type hinting is and how it works. And I'm going to create a function that will sum two variables and return the value. So we're going to call function sum that will accept two parameters x and y and return x plus y. Now don't worry about plus operator either or the return type, we'll cover all this later. And we're simply going to echo out the value of this function call. So we're going to call sum on the numbers 2 and 3. And if we refresh the page, that returns 5. So it's working as expected. Now again, PHP dynamically assigns the data types to these variables. If we do var dump here for x and y, these are coming up as integers. But what if you passed something like a string instead of an integer? What would happen in that case? As you can see, it's taking the integer and then string and it's returning the integer 5. And we know that it's an integer because we can just assign this to a variable and then echo out sum. And then we can also var dump the sum right here. And we see that the value is integer. Let's add some line break here for clarity and also add line break here. You could specify that the variables x and y are integers and now when we refresh the page the second variable is coming up as integer and not as string even though we have passed the string in here and this is called type juggling or type coercion basically what's happening is that even though we have type hinted that this variable must be integer php will still try and convert the given value to the function to the appropriate data type so this means that the type of the variable is determined by the context in which the variable is used now you could also do something like pass 2.5 as a float and even though we're expecting integer this will convert this into number two and we get the exact same result now if in case php cannot do this conversion dynamically then it will throw an error for example if we expected something like an array and refresh the page we get the fatal error also it's worth mentioning that the type of a variable is only guaranteed to be that type up until that point so what i mean is that we are guaranteed that this is going to be integer only up until this point after that it can change because you could technically put here x equals 5.5 and this will convert x into a floating number and that is perfectly acceptable in php so for example if we change this back to an integer and we change this back to three 
and we refresh page here, we get 5.5 as float because we are overriding right here to 5.5. So as mentioned before, don't worry about this too much. We'll talk more about this in more detail in upcoming videos. I just wanted to cover this in a basic level so that you have an idea how it actually works. Now there is a way to enable strict mode on PHP and the strict mode basically means that you will throw an error if you pass another type than integer, even if you pass something that can be converted dynamically. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to remove these and let's make sure that it still works and it does and let's change this to string and right now it still works and now let's enable the strict type and you can enable that by using declare strict types equals one. And right now, as soon as I added that, my ID is already underlining this here and telling me that string is not an acceptable type. It's expecting integer. And if we refresh the page here, we're getting fatal error. However, there is one exception here. Even in strict mode, you can still pass an integer where a float type is expected without any error. So for example, let's change these expected types from integer to floats. And let's pass two floating numbers, 3.5 and 2.5. And this is going to work. Now let's pass two integers. And as you can see, ID is not underlining. And if we refresh, this works as well. So should you use strict types and type hinting? It is entirely up to you, though I personally recommend it. And I personally use type hinting and strict types as much as I can. It provides better quality of code where I know exactly what types are accepted and it will avoid unexpected bugs. So let's talk about typecasting. So let me clear these out and let's define a variable here x equals 5 and let's put that in strings. And let's do var dump x and we get value of 5 in a string data type. You could actually force this to be an integer type and you could cast anything to the data types using the name of the data type within the parentheses. So if you want to cast this into an integer, you open parentheses, you type int or integer and you close the parentheses. So this would now cast the string 5 into an integer 5. And if we refresh that, that works. I'm going to leave some useful links in the description about types and casting. So please check them out if you want to know more. Thank you for watching. Please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.